Well, it being Trinity Sunday, I want to muse with you all a bit this morning on one of the great transcendent mysteries of our Christian tradition, the Trinity. We have to remember that the idea of God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as described in the Gospels of Jesus Christ, was the great heresy for many Jews in the time of Jesus and since. What could they and what can we make of this? Well, a little bit of quick history on this. It was really about in the end of the first century that people started to wonder, what does this all actually mean and how can we formulate a response? Yet a guy, the first person perhaps to even think about this in these terms was Ignatius of Antioch. And he called for support for a trinity uh, in obedience to Christ and the Father and the Spirit. And then Justin Martyr, again at the very end, or probably mid-second century, wrote, In the name of God, the Father and Lord of the universe, and of our Savior Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. And then... This guy Theophilus of Antioch in the late second century wrote that the word, it was the first to use the word Trinity as God, his word, Logos, and wisdom. And then the great Tertullian church father, he was in the third century, he's the one who explicitly defined for the church and for the rest of us after that the Trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, this is important because we have to understand that this idea of the Trinity is descriptive of God, but it's a human invention. We just made it up trying to figure out what is Scripture talking about? God in the, in the Old Testament spends an awful lot of time, and it's part of the first great commandment, saying, I am the only God. Worship only me. And then suddenly you have this three-person conception. Genesis in 126 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, etc., etc. This is a weird idea. Uh, God is not just a single entity or force, but is a community of being. Again in Genesis, God says, And the Lord said, The man has now become like one of us. This is after Adam and Eve have eaten of the apple. The man has now become like one of us. Us. Who's us? Now, some have said that maybe it means that there's actually more than one God. But, you know, as I said, God is always saying, there is one God, that's me, worship me. Some have said, well, maybe God is including the angels. But nowhere in Scripture does it ever tell us that the angels, whoever they are, were made in the image of God. Only we, as human beings, are said to be made in the likeness or the image of God. Which really brings us to some interesting ideas about what it means to be created in God's image. Maybe that means perhaps we don't just live in community with other people, but we ourselves are a community of spirits, personalities, and possibilities. Now, this is not nearly as funny as it might sound. Ever notice that when you are hungry, it's the hungry you that's in charge? Or when you're angry, sometimes you can't not be angry and you end up saying things that the not angry you would never say or has to regret and apologize for? This is actually the closest that clinical psychology has been able to, to pin down this incredible mystery that we call personality. It's really not that we are sort of one thing with different forces working on us, but rather we are a series of patterns and processes laid on top of one another. Our brains are unspeakably complex. Who we are is made up of different beings and spirits that go back to our earliest primordial selves. The hungry you is a whole lot older and more basic to who you are than the you trying to figure out math problems. We are incredibly uh, complex creatures. 
that we are a collection of beings arising from different parts of our brains and the evolutionary past, and that somehow, if it's working properly, exist in a functional, even contented and harmonious way. Contented and harmonious way. We are healthiest when all the pieces of us are working together in perfect harmony with the rest of the pieces of us. We are sufficiently fed, rested, healthy, not anxious, not angry, at peace with ourselves, our desires, dreams, and our purpose. Imagine that. Feels good just to think about that state, doesn't it? At one with all the different parts of you. And never notice that it's the same with other people in our lives. You are happiest and most fulfilled when the community you are living in is working in perfect rhythm, in peace, in sync with one another. Your family, your work, your friendships, whatever community, large or small, that you know yourself to be a part of. This is not a coincidence. Perhaps what we call the Trinity is simply a divine manifestation of the idea of a harmonious community as the most important and desirable state of being. That God in God's self is a harmonious state of community. And think about it. Something magic happens when people in community become united as one. It's often unexpected. Sometimes we may get glimpses of what it really feels like when human beings are really in full unity with God. We might, some of us experience here in the Holy Eucharist, or in prayers, loud or silent. It can happen, believe me, in families at the bedsides when a parent is dying or really any deeply shared joy or sadness occurs. Sometimes really intense musical concerts can feel that way. And every high school football movie you've ever seen about the underdog that has to come together to take on the big team, that's what that's about. We are stronger and somehow more connected and better when we're united and working together. True community, in a sense, happens in a dance with the Holy Spirit. And when it happens, we reflect the image of the Trinity, the image of God. I'll give you a quick example. Boys in the Boat is a story of a man named Joe Rance, a poor boy from Washington State who rode in the Olympics in 1936. At the end of his life, when he's lying, dying, his most treasured memory, the most golden moments of his life, were the days rowing with his crewmates. He couldn't quite describe what would happen in that boat, but his best shot at it was that all the boys rode as one. Daniel Brown, the author, describes it in this way. There's a thing that sometimes happens in rowing that is hard to achieve and hard to define. Many crews, even winning crews, never really even find it. Others find it but can't sustain it, and it's called swing. It only happens when all eight oarsmen are rowing in such perfect unison that no single action by any one is out of sync with those of all of the others. It's not just when the oars enter and leave the water at precisely the same instant. Sixteen arms must begin to pull. Sixteen knees must begin to fold and unfold. Eight bodies must begin to slide forward and backward. Eight backs must bend and straighten all at once. Each minute action, each subtle turning of wrists must be mirrored exactly by each oarsman from one end of the boat to the other. Only then will the boat continue to run unchecked, fluidly and perfectly and gracefully between the poles of the oars. Only then will it feel as if the boat is a part of each of them, moving as if on its own. Only then does pain entirely give way to exaltation. Rowing then becomes a kind of perfect language. Poetry. That's what good swing feels like. 
I think Joe Rance got a taste of the kingdom of God. The dynamic relationship of oneness between God and people when he and his crewmates achieve this swing. When there's complete harmony between individuals, moving together in such a way as to become one while still maintaining their individuality. Now, maybe you've experienced this, and I'll bet you have, whether you noticed it or not. Look forward in your own life. I think it truly is a taste of this kingdom of God here, but not yet, always becoming. It's something sacred, and it is something to seek and cultivate. Pentecost Sunday last week over at Christ Church, I I really felt it where the people in the spirit of St. Martin's joined with those of Christ Church, and from many together came one thing. It was an experience of community, of peace and joy, and, and just fun. That Louisiana swing band was just awesome. It was great. And I hope we have more of that. But watch for it and cultivate it in your own life. It happens when you're in the swing in the zone with others in community. And everyone around you is somehow at one with what is occurring. It's an experience of transcendence. This is what God is like. Three in one. And one in three. A community of coexistence. A complete unity of being and action. An experience that both lifts us out of ourselves and yet brings us closer to who God made us to be, probably more than anything else we've ever known. In the name of the Trinity, the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.